Good morning. In the previous couple of videos, we had discussed what Tasagi's bearing capacity theory is, what bearing capacity in general means, what general shear failure is, what local shear failure is, and what punching shear failure is. We discussed the assumptions based on Tasagi's bearing capacity equation, and we had extended that equation from strip footing to a square footing, a rectangular footing, and a circular footing. And we also discuss the equation to estimate the ultimate bearing capacity when you can expect a local shear failure. Later on, we move to the uh, effective water table on the bearing capacity. And now, we'll try to see a few numerical problems. The first question, you have a square footing, 2.5 by 2.5 meter in plan, built on a homogeneous bed of sand of unit weight 20 kN per meter cube and phi 36 degrees. It is located at 1.5 meter below the ground surface. You are asked to calculate the safe load that can be carried by the footing with a factor of safety of 3 against shear. You are asked to estimate it using the Tessagis equation with nc, nq and n gamma. Values are given in the question. Now, fundamentally, it's nothing but a square footing, so you have to rely on this equation. For square footing, you have 1.2 cnc plus gamma df nq plus 0.4 gamma bn gamma. Nothing is said about the water table, so you don't have to consider the presence of the water table. And from the data given the question, you can see that. B is given, the breadth is given, DF is given, the depth of foundation is given, gamma is given, unit weight is given, C is given as 0 because it's said to be a homogeneous bed of sand. So you can take C equals 0, cohesion less. So substituting these values in the equation, you are given with C is equal to 0, so the first term vanishes out. Gamma is given in the question as 20, DF is given in the question as 1.5 meter, NQ is given in the question as 49.4. Every other term is given in the third, uh, the third term is also known to us. So you just have to substitute the values to get the value of QU. Now you're asked to calculate the safe load that can be carried by a footing. So once you get QU, which is the ultimate load, the gross ultimate load, you calculate the net ultimate load QNU. QNU is equal to QU minus gamma DF. Again, gamma is known to us, DF is known to us. So based on these two equations, you get QNU, the net ultimate bearing capacity, to be around 2532 kilopascals. Again, I'd suggest you to go through the equation and try to work it on your own and check if you're getting the same answer 2532 kilopascal based on which you can calculate the safe capacity QNS you know QNU and you know the factor of safety 3 you just have to divide QNU divide by 3 and the value that you get for QNS is around 844 kilopascals now that is a bearing capacity which means the load taken by the soil per unit area now to calculate the safe load that can be carried by the footing you just have to multiply 844 by the area of the footing because 844 kilopascal is nothing but the bearing capacity or the pressure that the soil can withstand safely so 844 multiplied by the area of the footing b square will give you the total load the footing can take and that turns out to be around 5275 kilonewton so that's a very simple question that you can expect just a direct application of the equation to find the uh, ultimate capacity and hence the safe capacity of a square footing now the next question you have a strip footing one meter wide and the depth of the foundation is at 0 0.8 meter below the ground level. The properties of the soil are given. Gamma is given, C is given, phi is given. So it's a C5 soil, cohesive frictional soil. 
You're asked to determine the safe bearing capacity using a factor of safety 3, assuming local shear failure based on Thersaghi's equation. So, uh, for local shear failure, you know the equation is with a 2 by 3 term. QU, the ultimate bearing capacity, is 2 thirds CNC plus gamma DFNQ plus half gamma BN gamma. If you take a look at the question, you know that the terms given are breadth B is given as 1 meter, then you have depth of foundation, TF is given as 0 0.8 meter, gamma is given as 18, C is given as 30, phi is given. Now, based on phi, angle of internal friction 20 degrees, you can use the charts given in standard textbooks to get NC, NQ and N gamma. So in the previous question, NC, NQ and gamma, the bearing capacity factors were already given in the question. Here, based on phi equal to 20 degrees, you'll have to use the charts or perhaps the equation if you're familiar with that to get NC, NQ and N gamma. So you have B equal to 1 meter, DF 0.8, gamma 18, C 20 and corresponding to 20 degrees of angle of internal friction, Tasagi suggested the values of NC to be 11.8, NQ to be 3.9 and N gamma to be 1.7. So now since we know all the values, you can substitute them in this equation to get QU. Solving that, you get 307.5 kilopascals. Now that is QU, the gross ultimate bearing capacity, from which you can calculate the net ultimate bearing capacity by subtracting gamma DF term. Again, gamma is already given the question, DF is already known. So QNU is equal to QU minus gamma DF and you get a value of around 293.1 kilopascal. So since you know grows and as you know the net ultimate bearing capacity using the factor of safety you can find qns the safe capacity qnu by factor of safety qnu is already known as 231 you just have to divide it by 3 and you will get a value of around 97.7 kilopascal again i'd like you to work it out on your own and just cross check if you're getting the same flow of answers. Next question. You're asked to design a strip footing to carry a load of 750 kN per meter run at a depth of 1.6 meter in a C5 soil having a unit weight of 18 kN per meter cube and C20 kPa 5 25 degrees. So you'll have to design by determining the width of the footing using a factor of safety of 3 against shear failure. Again, you can use Tasagas theory. Now, if, uh, B is unknown. We don't know B. DF is known. 1.6 meter. So for strip footing, we know the equation of QU is equal to CNC plus gamma DF and Q plus half gamma B and gamma in which B is unknown. DF is known 1.6 meters, gamma is 18 kN per meter cube, C is 20 kPa, phi is 25 degrees, based on which, I mean based on the value of phi, you can get NC, NQ and N gamma. Again, from the charts or from the equations. So substituting these values, QU is 20 into 25.1 plus 18 into 1.6 into 12.7 plus half into 18 into the unknown B into 9.7. So you'll get an equation for B. Now, this is a gross ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. Now the footing should be designed in such a way that it should carry 750 kN per meter run of the footing, which means every one meter perpendicular to this slide, the footing should carry 750 kN safely, which means 750 divided by B divided by 1 meter should be equal to the safe capacity. So I have 750 divided by B divided by 1, 
So the denominator is equal to b into 1, which means the area of the footing per meter run. So 750 by the area gives you the safe capacity, which is equal to qu by factor of safety. So equating 750 by area is equal to qu divided by 3. Solving that will give you the value of b, the breadth, to be 2.13 meter, which means when you design a footing of 2.13 meter, approximately 2.2 meters at a depth of 1.6 meters, and if it's constructed in a soil of C20 and 5, 25 degrees with unit weight 18 kilonewton, every one meter of that strip will safely carry 750 kilonewtons. So that's the idea. Now you might have a confusion and I have marked it here, but that will be an assignment. Why have we taken QU directly and why haven't we taken Q and U? So in the first and the second questions previously discussed, we had taken Q and U and divided it by factor of safety 3 to get Q and S. In this particular question, we have not taken Q and S. I mean, we have not taken Q and U and we just use QU divided by factor of safety. I would like you to think about that and just let me know.